This video was brought to you by my patrons, thank you so much for your support. You probably want to make your dream game, right? And there is an MMORPG, I know, that's how we usually get into game development. But there are simpler games you can make to get into the game development industry and build the skills you need to make your dream game. So in this video we are going to talk about the 5 game genres you can get started with your journey and build those skills so you can reach your goal. So let's jump into it. Top down shooters are those games where the camera is wide above the character with a wide vision of the game world and the character can move in all directions, but most importantly the character shoot on enemies. Games like Asteroid, Hot Like Miami, uh, GTA 2 and Ikaruga, they all fit in this genre. Oh, by the way I have a game, The Fermi Parallax, which is a vertical scroller that is a space shooter subgenre that also fit in this genre. I'll put a link in the description if you want to play it, it is available for free on H.io. Top down shooters are awesome to understand the basics of input handling and perform movement, for instance. They are also good to understand how you can spawn objects into the game world, for instance, how you can spawn a bullet, how you can add an enemy, how you can make asteroids appear on the screen. If you want to start with a top down shooter, I will recommend you to make a, an asteroid copy. You can add everything into a single screen and hide the UI elements, so the play screen, the main menu, uh, the credit screen, everything, the hide score, and you hide these elements and you make them appear based on some events inside their game. So everything will happen into a single screen, it will be quite easy to manage those elements. Oh, by the way, if you want to get that effect when the object reaches the edge of the screen, it goes to the other side, you can use warp functions. For instance, in Godot, you can use the warp f function to warp the position of the character or the spaceship. Adventure games are those games where the core value is a good story. People with storytelling skills exceed in this genre. Usually in adventure games, developers create branched stories where each player action leads them to a different story path. Solving a mystery, defeating a foe, exploring a fantasy world, all those are great plots you can explore with just a few UI elements and a good text database. If you want to go even further, you can add some graphics, make some screen transitions and add some animations to get started with the visual novels genre. Which by the way, Nathan from GD Quest just released a, an update on the 2D Secrets course which is all about visual novels, so definitely worth checking out. By making an adventure game, you'll be able to develop your skills to make logic branching and also to parse files from a database. For instance, one of the most common files you use to feed your game with data is a JSON file. There you can put dialogues, titles, character names, uh, even some path to graphics and even more. Then you just need to load those JSON files and parse everything based on your player's interactions. Oh, by the way, in Godot Engine you can use the parse JSON to parse a JSON file as a dictionary. Then, if you want to store your game data as a JSON file, you can use the to JSON to parse the dictionary to a JSON file format. Pretty useful methods. Creating a virtual turn-based strategy game is one of the best skills you can develop as a game designer. Games like checkers, chess, tic-tac-toe and even go are great to develop your ability to abstract concepts and rules into the digital world. By developing a turn-based strategy game, you'll be sharpening your ability to understand abstract concepts like grids and turns. I myself, I never understand why turns and grids are so common into tabletop games for instance, until I realized they are just a discrete way to abstract space and time. Talking about grids, you might already know that, but in Godot Engine we have the tile map node. It's not just a great level design tool, but it's also a building tool for mapping game coordinates. For instance, a great way to know if there is an object into a given board coordinate is to map this object position to the dictionary. For that, you can use the tile map wall to map method. Platformers are one of the most popular game genres, especially if you are just starting to game development. A platformer is an action game where the player must navigate a character between two points in a given environment, for instance, in a level or a room. Games like Super Mario, Super Meat Boy, and a whole ton of well awarded games, including most of my favorite games, all fit this genre. Making a platformer will help you understand one of the core features a game engine can provide to its users, its physics simulation engine. For instance, I wasn't aware of the difference between a rigid body and a kinematic body in Godot Engine. Things like why I couldn't make a static body platform fall or why my rigid body character keeps spinning while I'm just trying to make it jump. 
Well, if you're interested in making a platform again, I made a video about how you can make one in just five steps. You can check it on the card somewhere here. Also, I'm going to make a complete video series here on YouTube about how to make a platform game from start to finish, from like the splash screen to the credit screen. For that, I just need to reach the $200 goal on my patronage campaign. So go to my Patreon page, become a patron right now, and let's make this happen. The links will be in the description and also at the end screen. Puzzle games are a special type of strategy game. They test the player's ability to recognize patterns, use their logic skills, and, in a sense, to solve a problem. Mahjong, Candy Crush, and even Minesweeper, they all fit in this genre, but this is a very broad genre to explore. By creating puzzle games, you develop your skills to manage object relationships. Since you solve the puzzle, the players will need to figure out the range that will lead them to the winning condition, you need to figure out a way to abstract this arrange somehow. The good thing about a puzzle game is that you can make them into a single screen as well, so this will cut a lot of production time. So these are my 5 suggestions to get started with your game development journey. Note that by mixing and matching those genres, you can get even more complex games. For instance, if you mix an adventure game and a turn-based strategy, you can make a turn-based RPG. Or if you mix a puzzle and a platformer, you can make a, <laughs> well, a, plus, a puzzle platformer, which is still a pretty popular genre. By making simple games, you will develop your skills to make even more complex games, and you will eventually get to the point where you can make your dream game. So start small and be consistent. For this video, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, keep developing, and until the next time.